Hey you guys, this is Osh and this is going to be a very special video again because as you can see from the title I have the prototype of the new deck by uh, Stephanie Myers and Anna Mollers. Um It's called Heartwood, right? Yes, oh, I'm just, you know, I don't want to say anything that's not correct uh, which I'm very, very grateful that I got it so, you know, finally content that I can actually uh, be excited about posting on this channel because I still haven't fi really figured out what I want uh, to do with my channel but you know that's not important right now. Uh, two things, uh, there's gonna be a preview of the deck um, posted on Stephanie's website. Um, you know I have all the links here but they're gonna be in the description down below and the pinned comment as well. On the 19th of April, the pre-order is going to start on the 3rd of May and Stephanie is going to be my guest on this channel on the 7th of May, the next Tuesday. So, you know, if you want to hear from her about the deck and, you know, just want to listen to us chat about her decks, then please join us. Uh, hopefully, you know, everything is going to be okay and we are both free on the day but uh, right now that's the plan so as you can imagine uh, ever since i heard about this deck uh, which was i think by chance because we were having a conversation about decks uh, it was quite early on that you know i knew that the theme about the theme of the deck uh, because we don't often talk but uh, you know for whatever reason um uh, we were talking um, and she mentioned, Stephanie mentioned this deck. I was excited because, you know, imagine a little cottage in, in a, a darker side of the woods because that's how I kind of imagined, you know, a more abandoned by people side of um, the forest. There's a little cottage and then there's going to be, uh, I don't think, I don't can't remember if Stephanie already said that there's going to be I don't think uh, she said that there's going to be a tiny mouse going through as the fool. But, you know, the whole setting, I was imagining a tiny bat as a hangman. It wasn't uh, in the end. It's a different uh, card. But I think the bat featured in the deck is also really, really, really cute. So, you know, I was excited. And I went through the cards and I checked the guidebook. Um, because I, I'm, I'm trying to be as informative as I can be with this deck because, you know, it's not just about, oh, I got the deck and you look at the cards, but I'm trying to be um, informative. So, you know, you can decide if you want to get the deck or not. Hopefully this video is going to be helpful. Uh, as per usual, I have um, a flip through of the deck as well. Uh, this is a not obviously it's a final form, uh, the corners are going to be rounded just like in the Okesh and Thorn, which is still one of my favorite decks. Um, so, and I think, uh, the uh, let me check, but I think it's going to be more saturated. Uh, uh, let me check the notes because I have notes. Du, 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 du. Mm, of course, I can't find it because why not? Oh yeah, round, rounded corners, obviously, and a slightly more saturated colors. Yes, I, I remembered correctly. Uh, as you can see, I think you can see, uh, probably, you know, this orange is going to be similar to the butterfly. So that's going to be just a, a tiny bit more uh, saturated which is cool um, the you know and and obviously there's gonna be a box this is the Orcash and Thorn which I have um, as a you know as example to show and uh, there's gonna be connections between the two decks and there's a, a guidebook uh, preview as well that I saw which is very exciting uh, I love guidebooks and I like really well written guidebooks and this one is as per usual i can say that now it's a as a it's a well written guidebook because i appreciate when we get information about the artwork and not just that oh you can see a tiny mouse and a cottage in the background but why it is there what are we supposed to feel get from the image because you know we interpret things differently so 
I appreciate when the creators are sharing what they want to show because I looked at some cards and I totally get different feelings than the um, original intended one, which is not a bad thing, obviously. It's tarot, you know, we read cards differently. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's nice to have the reference. So in the guidebook, there's always uh, for each card a description and and then a meaning, how you can use the meaning in a reading, plus keywords. And I really like keywords. Um, I find those uh, very useful, especially for people who are learning tarot. And I think this deck actually can be used um, as a deck for first time learners because... I think the most important thing, and maybe I should, uh, you know, make a video about it, but what I uh, think is important, but one of the most important things I think for me uh, as a, an advice for everybody who starts with tarot is to pick some, pick a deck you, you absolutely love the artwork. Because if you just pick it because you think it's useful and this is how you should learn tarot, you're not going to... Um, pick that deck up as much as, uh, you know, a deck that you're absolutely in love with. So I think if you love the artwork and if you love the artwork of the Okesh and Thorn, um, then you will love the artwork of this one as well. It has a similar mood, but for me, maybe it's just, I don't know, maybe it's just my interpretation because I checked and um, in the guidebook, the the way Stephanie is describing the deck is that it seems darker, but it's not. But sometimes with cards, I definitely got that abandoned. Um, I don't even know. It's not sinister because then it's not sinister. The deck is not sinister. But I had a more darker vibe from cards than the Okesh and Thorn. For me, the Okesh and Thorn is absolutely the part of the forest where the... The trees are sunlit and animals are, you know, like having an easier time um, than with this deck. There's going to be, as per usual, uh, uh, very useful cards where you get keywords for each of the, um, the cards. You know, we have the three keywords that are in the guidebook. So you can keep these with you if you're, you know, if you need some... Um, Reminders. Also, for the first edition uh, of this deck, there's going to be five extra cards. So, you know, if you like extra cards, you should get them because I think they, they are not going to be available later on. If I read that correctly. Uh, no, 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 no. Yes, those are going to be exclusive for the first printing. So if you like the extra cards, I keep them in decks. So, you know, I absolutely going to use them in working with this one as well. Mm, and I'm looking forward to getting the, obviously, the 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 final version. Not, I almost said correct, but this is correct version as well. So what I was thinking is that, you know, like showing you all the cards because it's different. I didn't just want to show you one or a few few cards that I like. Uh, I was just thinking, let, let's go through the whole deck and I will talk about what I see, what I like, what I don't like and stuff like that. And then you have time to, you know, look at the card in depth if you want to as well. So this is the, you know, uh, a card from the Occasion Thorn. As you can see, the size is going to be the different, uh, the same. <laughs> the difference is that the, uh, while these had borders, this is borderless. So this is the first, not first because the, um, oh my God, I wanted to, the Thistledown Oracle is also um, borderless. And this was my card for the week community, which I think is uh, quite fitting. So this is the Fool. And this is the back, and the, on the back you can see the fool actually with a with a key, and some um, buttons. Honestly, I'm not a fan of um, too closely. Uh, man, the artwork on the back is too closely illustrated of a card in uh, in the deck because. Um, I don't know, I just find it uh, a bit um, distracting. And this one reminds me of, for some reason, the Four of Pentacles, even though there are, I just saw there are five uh, buttons. 
Um, but because it looks like that this is going to be bordered, at least, you know, the back, it's not as distracting because you, you can clearly see the difference between um, the, the artwork on the card and the back. Plus, it's not an actual card because sometimes I had the... Um, what was the... Uh, the oracle with the secret language of animals oracle or something that I got recently where the lion card is the, uh, it was chosen, the artwork for the lion uh, card was chosen as the back of the cards, uh, which I think is distracting and it's, it's, I don't know, it's confusing sometimes because I kind of feel like that that card is overwhelming the whole deck, so I will have to get rid of my connection with the four of pentacles with this one, even though it's 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 cute, and I and then I like the uh, explanation for it. It's the key is you know helping you unlock uh, the knowledge that's in the card. So I like that, but you know it's just my my own thing. I I prefer something like this absolutely for uh, a back of a card, but you know it's not my deck, so you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not criticism, it's just, you know, my thing. So the fool, it's it's tiny, like the mouse. And, and I love that, you know, this is the place where the whole deck is set place. And the five of pentacles is one of the, my favorite cards just by going through the whole deck because of that as well. Because of how it plays with how close we are to the actual scene of the deck uh, because you know the fool is entering uh, the journey where should i back? i'm gonna put it here uh the magician is one of the cards that i'm not necessarily um, looking at it as that magician-y i like that the mouse the fool is here because you know in the fool's journey the fool is supposed to go through each stages and meet uh, the main archetypes on the card. So I kind of like that on most cards, the fool actually is meeting uh, with the energies that they are supposed to interact with. Um, we, we have the usual, you know, like tools for the magician, but I don't know, for some reason it kind of, or maybe it's, hmm. Now that I think about it, maybe it's, you know, like the magician is always hiding something. You can't really see. Uh, if you think about, you know, like a traditional, like magician, you can't really see what they are doing because you're not supposed to look at one hand. You're supposed to look at, you know, the one that's distracting. So it could be that. Um, also, about the connection with the Okesh and Thorn, um, there's quite a few cards mentioned where you can uh, find uh, not that hidden Easter eggs, but, you know, connections between the two decks. But uh, I'm not going to mention them all because I think it's the fun for you uh, if you have both decks to discover these connections. So, you know, why would I um, take that discovery away from you? But there are, you know, obvious ones like the Devil and the Lovers, which I appreciate and, you know, I will talk about. But, you know, it's it's a cute one. Uh, I love the High Priestess. As you might know, the High Priestess is my card. It's uh, the most important card for me in every deck. This is my my connection to Tarot. So I wasn't even sure what I would want in a deck um, like this for a High Priestess. But this is absolutely adorable. <laughs> And um, I think it's a good one. Sometimes the cards are very, uh, how to say that, they are embodying the original uh, representations or symbols uh, in a way that animals don't act. Sometimes they are different when they depict a scene that is more closely to how animals would uh, act you know like okay maybe you know not really but more closely than how i would imagine the animals actually act so that's an interesting uh thing to consider that sometimes you get some like something like this where um obviously a bird with a uh i, th I think it's, i think it's a wren but i'm not entirely sure about the english name of um cars so let me check 
because I have the guidebook. Um, yeah, it's a blue wren. Okay, because I wasn't sure about the English name. Um, you know, holding uh, some parchment uh, paper. So you know, when when would a uh, uh, bird do that? Like never. But I like the I like the bowl as well with the crescent moon and stars. And I kind of like that, you know, this cottage is obviously abandoned. And on some cards, you, you would say that the previous owners just left. But on these, you can see that they were, that they left uh, a long time ago because the tapestry is coming down and stuff like that. The Empress, I mean, <laughs> it's so cute. And, you know, if you have the occasion thorn, then you remember the setting for the Empress in that deck as well. Or was that the the word card? Maybe the word card has, you know, the mother and the tiny one, but I kind of like this setting. And I was looking for the mouse and this one and I didn't find it. So hopefully it's not there and I'm not just, you know, being blind. Uh, the Emperor, I think it's it's one of those darker cards. It kind of looks a bit scary because, you know, there's a tiny mouse, the fool, and there's a wolf coming down the stairs. But I like the paintings about the rams. You know, symbology is there. But, you know, cards like this definitely gives me a more darker vibe, which is not bad. I just think that... Like I said, this definitely feels like it's part of the forest where 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 um, the trees are not letting that much sunshine in. Maybe it reminds me a little bit of a, a Hobbit, um, a forest from the Hobbit, like not from Lord of the Rings, but I can't remember the name out of the top of my head right now. Um, not in English anyway. Uh, but it gives me that feeling. It definitely has a fey energy for me. I actually really like this Hierophant. Even though it's it kind of reminds me of the... Um, oh, what's the card? What what for the other card that I wanted to mention? Um, let me... Let me check the name. The Hermit. I don't know why I was blanking on that, but it kind of gives me a Hermit, a little Hermit vibe as well. But... I don't know, you know, because maybe it's just the shape of the the window, but it definitely has that feeling. Um, that it's not missing the original symbology of the card. Like, you know, getting, getting the key. Which is pretty much the... Um, the most important. Oh, and I forgot, but the Lover's cards and the Devil cards has two versions. So I think it's really cool that you can choose from. I haven't decided which one I want. Uh, I think this is the one for the Lovers. Not just because it's, you know, it's, um, it's a connection with the Occasion Thorn, but because the other one is more about self-love. Which is a good one, actually, because, you know, it should be about as well. But um, I like the, the choice connection for the lovers more. So for me, this card with the original lovers from the other deck uh, gives m more of a reminder of the choice than, than this one. But, you know, it's just me. But both are really, like, beautiful uh, artwork, obviously. The chariot is a very simple uh, connection to the meaning with the horse, but I think it's, it's it has everything we need. Mm, yeah, so sometimes the, the connections are simple, but you have everything you need, I think. Um, strength is quite interesting. We have the um, uh, infinity symbol here as well. And with the snake, you know, mouse and snake... Not very good combination. The snake could be like, oh, look, breakfast, but 
I'm assuming it discarded, not about that. <laughs> um, let me check the guidebook. Do, do, do. Mm. Oh, okay, it's a camouflage, camouflaged sneak. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's pretty much, you know, the usual, like, you have to face your fears and the snake is like, oh, let me just get in and eat, eat you up. But what you do in the moment of like something that scares you is going to determine where you're going forward from that moment. And this could be it, you know, like, are you running away, saving your ass, or are you trying to fight back, which is not the most advisable with the strength card anyway, because I, that at least how I read the strength card is diplomacy is more useful than brute force. But let me check the keywords for the strength card. It's boldness, courage, and confidence. The hermit is, is it, it kind of makes me sad, <laughs> to be honest. Because uh, it reminds me of, um, like, let's say that, you know, this is a story about the mouse. And this would be the moment when the mouse is finally finding, you know, like a place that it's a little dry and it's it's secure and finally getting some rest and just having that uh, four of swords moment as well, which is just me, you know, this is what I see in, in the card. So I'm not saying that this is a sad card, it's just that this is what uh, it reminds me of. But that's why I love decks like this, because, you know, you can actually get your own perspective. This is a very interesting one for a Wheel of Fortune because, you know, it's not the usual one. The clock doesn't seem to move. It cycles karma and destiny for the Wheel of Fortune as keywords. And, you know, the mouse is sleeping on top of um, the cycle, to be honest. It's, it's out of in a little way, out of the wheel of fortune. Um, I'm reading, I'm reading. Aha, uh -huh. so time stops as the hands strike 12, symbolizing the day's beginning or end. Okay, I like that. So it's, it's supposed to be, you know, like a uh, timeless, feeling of the of the card i don't know how i will read this one but I, this is one of those cards that when it's gonna come up in a reading it will definitely change uh by the surrounding cards that's for sure but you know this is quite a new uh way of looking at the wheel of fortune which i appreciate at least new for me justice is kind of like a typical card with all the papers and, you know, the swords and uh, wise owl. <laughs> the hanged mouse is, is, is a good one. <laughs> uh, like I said, I was hoping for a bat, but, you know, because the mouse is the fool, it makes uh, sense that it, this is the one uh, featured in the, in the card. And I like the name, the hanged mouse. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's definitely not... Um, Um, how to say, not uh, in, in the mouse is not in a dangerous position as much as it could be um, if you would depict the card in a different way. It's, I like that you can see that the mouse put itself into this position, which with the hanged man usually is how we end up in a hanged man. We do something that forces us into that uh, suspended appended position so you know i like that one death i think it's a really cool death death card is not not an easy way to depict um if you don't want to go to the with the usual you know like let's get the reaper but it it shows that that is a part of life and you have to make peace with it 
which for me is very uh, important because this is something that I struggle with. I thought about it multiple times. So for me, this is this is a brilliant death card. Temperance, on the other hand, it kind of feels like, uh, but I think the Temperance card was this um, wild, <laughs> full of movement and, and chaos in, in previous decks as well. For me, Temperance is a much more uh, peaceful card because it's all about balance. So it's it's kind of interesting that, and you can see the cups turn upside, like connected here, that for uh, Stephanie, uh, the Temperance seems to be more about the before reaching that balanced position. But, you know, this is something that if I remember, I will ask her about it and when we talk. And this is one of the two devil cards. This is the connection with the occasion thorn, which I think I'm gonna uh, keep because this one, while it's really cool, as in not for the mouse, obviously, uh, it reminds me, it has more of a death card feeling for me. So I think I'm gonna use this devil because this has that, ooh, come join us in the in the frame and, you know, stay with us forever and don't move forward. Let's get stuck together feeling, which is the devil is all about for me. The tower is, is also very interesting because, um, you know, something that's going outside of your life can stop you from moving forward. That's, you know, like how I read this card which is usually not what the tower is um, about, but in a way it is, because if you, don't, if you don't move with the energy, if you try to fight it, then you will just get, you know, stuck where you are. And after a while you will have to move forward because the tower is something, but it's um, not avoidable for sure. I love this tower. I think it's really, it's brilliant. It's so simple, yet it has everything you need for the star card. So this is definitely going to be, and I love the tiny face. It's just so cute. It's going to be my, one of my favorite cards for sure. The moon is interesting because the mouse is sleeping soundly. And with the moon card, I wouldn't get a sleeping, easily sleeping mousy mouse, but you know, that's just me. The sun is cute as well. I love the ladybugs. And you know, the happy face of the mouse. Judgment with the mirror, I appreciate that. I think it's very cool. I think it's the easiest way to explain judgment card for people like what is this all about like you have to face who you are why you are uh, the way you are and move from there on and accept the mistakes you made accept everything that you don't like when you look into the mirror but you know the point is to look into the mirror and and just be like okay this is me I can change things, I can try to work things, uh, like work on things that I don't like, but I have to accept them as part of me in order to level up, to move forward. The word is, is just, it looks like a really cool postcard for Christmas. So I don't know if Stephanie wants to put out some Christmas post postcards for this year, but I think this would be beautiful for, for Christmas. I'm just saying. <laughs> It's so, I mean, it's so cute. And it's interesting that this is the door, like I would say on the outside. So it's interesting. And then we have the extra card, we have unease. And for unease, we have keywords that anxiety, fear, and jitters. And then we have discovery like Star Trek, hey, <laughs> uh, you know, the cards are not as easy to handle right now because, you know, 
prototype and I haven't used them yet. For discovery, we have wonder, invitation and explore, which is kind of like a little bit of, uh, you know, like there's connection obviously with the star card. For tend, with the snail, which I absolutely adore. We have feed, cultivate, care for. And for surprise, we have delight, treat and glee. And I love that, you know, the mouse is, is, is actually surprising a bird. And for home, we have safe haven, coziness and shelter. And it's so cute that, you know, we have a dollhouse and the mouse found the dollhouse and it would have been nice to sleep on the bed, but that would have been too much maybe. <laughs> and then we have um, the cup suit where cups are not always represented as actual cups on the picture, which I think is it's not a problem, to be honest. Usually I'm not a, a cup suit uh, person, but I think in this deck, this was one of my favorite ones. Uh, but you know, this is not a typical Ace of Cups uh, image if you think about it, because Ace of Cups usually is more about like new love and finding something that you know gives you excitement and butterflies and whatnot. So, um, dun -dun -dun. but the mouse is, is you know looking at the symbol. It's kind of in a similar meaning given in the book uh, because it's intuition and new beginnings like the Fool card which is interesting. I don't necessarily connect uh, the Fool card with Aces that much even though I don't know why not. Uh, and if you think about it, you need to be a fool to actually fall in love as well. Like you need to allow yourself to let go of a lot of things. The Two of Cups is such a colorful and and just um, nice <laughs> scene. So, you know, it has everything you need for a Two of Cups. Again, with the Three of Cups as well. And you can see the cups are here. But, you know, even if there wouldn't be like trees anywhere, because you have the three birds, it gives the meaning that we usually look for in a tree of cups. We have four of cups, which is interesting, with all the fey lights and the wolf, because they are all, you know, like the same. It's, none of them is more hidden or, or maybe, maybe this is under the bed. Let me check. Mm, no, it's not, but I could see that, you know, that this is not as visible as the trees, but it's it, it has that feeling of, oh yeah, those, those are really cool and they're really beautiful and, you know, I could move down and, and grab them, but no, I'm just gonna stay here and just look and not do anything which is a very typical feeling, I think, for humans. <laughs> Five of Cups, we, we have more, ha we, like, we have the more traditional depiction of the co uh, cups here. I love this Six of Cups. I don't know, we, the other mushrooms, the ladybugs, and obviously the two frogs, it's just, it's just so, I don't know, I don't want to say cute, but you know, because it's not like, oh, it's so cute in a degrading way, but it's, it's, it's definitely one of those, it's, it's like filled uh, with a scene, the card is filled with the scene from um, a children's book. So it has that Six of Cups meaning. I love the Seven of Cups because, uh, you know, it's like, oh, you can take just one because you know, what if someone's coming, we have to quickly decide what to grab and then maybe move away and you know if you don't uh, decide if you get stuck in that procrastinating 
state, you might miss the opportunity to take anything because other creatures could come in and, you know, take some, uh, all of those things. Eight of Cups, more usual, with the moon featured heavily. Nine of Cups is cute. <laughs> I think it's really fun. Just imagining your tiny mouse dancing to music from a gramophone. I love the Ten of Cups. Especially because it's not a scene where everything is perfect. It's more about making, creating your Ten of Cups um, state with the people uh, you have. You know, obviously there's a duck in Tidy Ducks. Ducklings. And finding that happiness in the circumstances that you have. I think it's a very um, rational way of um, expressing this card. Page of Cups, more usual, no mouse, but we have a frog and a goldfish. <laughs> Knight of Cups is very interesting as well. The queen, and we have the king. Also, what I like about this card is it's not in perfect conditions because if you can see the house is drowning in water, and to you know you can be drowning in emotions, but if you're in a state of king of cups then like, you can actually like learn how to navigate that state, which I think it's more realistic than, you know, like be like sitting on, on a calm sea or a calm ocean and be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm obviously um, a ruler of my emotions. But because in a state like this, you have to be in order to be able to actually take action. And then we are at the Pentacles, again, similar to how the Ace of Cups were. There's an edge symbol to a Pentacles with the snails. I mean, come on. This is like amazing. <laughs> I love it. Adam has a snail picture, which I still, uh, like a print. I still, I don't know why or how. Uh, I'm gonna get it. Not why, I know why I want it because it's a snail that has the shell as a tiny house and it's moving into water or something like that. But I keep missing the opportunity to get that print, but that is something that I really want. And this this uh, card reminds me of that. Three of Pentacles, which is interesting. I didn't really see the Three of Pentacles at first, but you know, we have the spiders working together, so it's more about the fool looking at someone or, you know, like a group of spiders working together. Um, not necessarily being part of the Three of Pentacles energy. We have a Four of Pentacles, which I think is cool. Because, you know, the frog has some uh, treasure, but you can, you can look at it two ways, you know, what's the point having them if you're just hiding somewhere or you can be um, in a state where you need to be more careful, so it's a good place to hide uh, currently what you have. And this is the, the five of pentacles that I said. I love that the fox, even though, you know, it has some money, it's outside of the cottage. It's alone and outside with a tree that's also um, injured or broken, it look like, you know, you know, it, it might be that it's a self-imposed abon uh, abandonment, I guess, or you did something and that's why you're outside. But I, I think it's good that, you know, the, the, the uh, fox is outside of the main uh, place of the deck. Six of Pentacles, it's really, I think these are small choices, I really like these one. 
they are definitely not the usual ones, but they keep back the the meaning. Uh, seven of Pentacles. <laughs> Which you can say that you did all the work you had to be done, and you can take some rest and just wait. Eight is typical more so, you know, like practicing, the school is practicing writing, but, you know, it's almost fountain pen. It's a quill, but it's almost fountain pen. Nine of pentacles. I like this one. Yeah, snail as well. Obviously, it had to be a snail, but you know, it's always good to find a snail. But I love how they just like, oh, we're gonna chill here, everything is fine, we have everything we need. The 10. It's a very interesting 10 with the three ravens, crows, I don't know. It kind of feels like we have journals from maybe a family. But I like the, the feeling of it. This because of the light, it has a much more warm feeling than warm feeling than some previous cards. The page of pentacles is interesting because it reminds me of the one of the extra cards, the uh, what was it called? The unease. Which I can even show you because why not? As you can see, it kind of reminds me of anise, so it's interesting. Even though, you know, it's not the same animal. But it's it's kind of similar. The Knight of Pentacles. I like the snail reference here because the Knight of Pentacles is a slow-moving energy. So with the um, chess piece, and the snail, it, I think it definitely gives back the energy of the card. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles, which is one of my favorite cards in every deck, besides, you know, the High Priestess. And I kind of like this one as well. Okay, I like most of these cards. <laughs> King of Pentacles is interesting. I don't know about this bird, to be honest. And I don't know if I see um, a bird like this as a king of pentacles. I'm trying to find, let me check what bird this one is, because I have no idea. Um, starling. That's the bird. Uh, okay. No. Okay, it's just a brilliant, brilliantly feathered bird. Mm, okay. Um, so yeah, this is uh, maybe if it's... Mm. I don't know much about this bird, so maybe it makes sense if you know the bird, but I don't, so I don't know currently. Again, with the Ace of Swords, we have the similar... So the Aces are quite... Uh, Similar. Uh, this was why. Why am I repeating myself and then getting confused about it? Uh, which in some decks are, and I kind of sometimes uh, it bothers me. Sometimes it doesn't. Two of Swords, very interesting with the spider. Definitely a choice. We have the Three of Swords, an injured bird. You know, it's not actually stabbed or anything a swore a sore <laughs> a four of swords is i think it's it's a good um typical energy of the card five as well being a bit greedy and staying you know alone because you're greedy because you couldn't let go and uh, flew with the others six of swords The seven is interesting, as you know, sometimes. Um, 
the characters are in paintings. But it kind of gives me like um, Harry Potter paintings, you know, when they are alive and they can interact with uh, other people, which I don't mind at all. Eight of Swords. I know that this is uh, the card for Stephanie, so it's always interesting to look at the card because, you know, there are these um, clouds, but the bunny has the chance to get rid of them. Very interesting. Uh, I mean, in this setting of uh, an abandoned cottage. Nine of Swords. Interesting. I don't know if I get uh, nightmares from this one, though. It's just really uncomfortable sleep. That's, 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 that, that one I'm getting. Ten of Swords. We have Grief, Sorrow, Despair, which is very, very good. Smart. I like smart choices. <laughs> but we also have the butterflies. So, you know, even if it's the end, it's also the beginning. But it's not easy. Because, you know, I read the Ten of Swords. If I read uh, an actual death or, you know, if I, I don't really do readings like that, but this would be the card for that. So I appreciate it when it's serious enough about the topic and it doesn't want to nice wash the meaning of the Ten of Swords because it can be a very, very difficult card to deal with and state to be in. Page of Swords, I like the stars, the night, Ogesh and Thorns, Smokesh and Numbers, isn't that great? <laughs> Do we have other? Um, the wheel. Mm, I can see what this one is. Thread, maybe? I don't know. The most. I don't know. But yeah, I like that. <laughs> These are books. The Queen of Swords. With a sneaky sneak. And the King. Now this is this bird is more typical for a king for me. The ace, and then we have the two of wands. And for the wands, uh, there's keywords for the um, minor suits as well. The swords are all thought or thoughts. Uh, the cups are emotions. Uh, we have the wands is our our spirit. And the pentacles are our material world. It's interesting, the spirit, because, you know, I usually um, hear elements used as spirit as the separate fifth one. But if you think about what gives you passion and what you need your spirit to be high, in a way, to be your, you have to have physical health as well. It, it's quite, quite suiting, or uh, suiting, so it, uh, fitting. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, two of wands. I think it's great as well. With the badger, we have the three of wands. Oh yeah, you have to actually start the journey. <laughs> Not just looking out the window and deciding where to go. Four of wands. Oh, it's a mushroom cake. And then the five. Interesting, because the birds are under the glass, like mm, holder. And then we have a six of wands. Definitely have a more victorious and happy and optimistic feel of the card. Seven of Wands, Eight of Wands, which has that energy for sure. 
And this is the night of wands with the bed. Even though the bed is, you know, injured, but I was just happy to see a bed. <laughs> And then we have the ten, the page, and the night. The night, yeah, it's not the mouse, you know, taking up on the roll, but a different animal. And then the queen with a very colorful ladybug. And the last one is the King of Wands, which is very interesting that this is a painting of an animal again. But also it has that feeling that you want from a, uh, a King of Wands. The confident, for sure. The confidence is there, so I like it. So yeah, this is, this is the deck. I mean the prototype, obviously. So like I said, it's gonna be... Um, rounded on the usual uh, really awesome quality cardstock. It's one of my favorite to work with, honestly. Um, you can find all the information here. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter because this is how you will get the preview link on the 19th of April. Uh, the deck will go up for pre-order on the 3rd of May and it's expected to be um, let me check the date, uh, yeah, dispatched around September or October, so it's not that far away and the season is going to be fitting. I hope this was useful, I hope, uh, you know, you're excited for this deck as well as I am. Um, I am, honestly, I think it's a really good one, I can't wait to work with it, which I have the privilege to actually start working with. Um, so yeah, uh, I think by the time the deck is coming out, there will be uh, a more in-depth review of the deck for sure, because I will have a few months to uh, work with it. So this is definitely staying on my reading table uh, so I can get a feel of how the deck works, uh, which oracles to use, with, uh, because, use it with, because obviously Thistledown is an obvious choice, but I want to uh, test it with other decks that have a completely different feel. Like, I know it's, you know, uh, one of the decks that I want to do uh, work with, uh, with this one is the Zombie Oracle because both have that darker, um, abundant feeling. So I think those two decks are gonna work well, but also the secret language of animals oracle is something I want to see how it works with because obviously animals. So I have a few decks that I have in mind. So by the time uh, the deck is going to come out or the first print maybe goes up for sale, I will have something more in depth for sure. But I think it's more about the time when the deck actually gets released. So I don't know if how useful that is going to be, but you know, I want to use it uh, before I talk about it, obviously. But yeah, it's a long one, I know, but hopefully uh, this is useful. And if you're interested in the deck, please do check it out. Um, the links that I posted and our conversation about the decks that's coming up on the 7th of May that you will find on this channel as well. So yeah, I will shut up and, uh, and just thank you again and see you in the next one. Bye.